Well, good morning to you. It is a frosty morning on a Saturday in West Tennessee, but that's okay. Just snuggle up close to your radio, and we're going to give you some information over the next hour or so. This is Tricks of the Trade, and here is West Tennessee's premier honeydew helper, John Allen. Good morning, hey, Jim. Man, How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm sitting here doing a circus balancing act <laughs> on this trick stool over here. See, there, this is this is a, a part of not only the radio program, but it's also part of our, our health and wellness program here at the radio station. You're tightening your core as you sit in that chair. You didn't know that, did you? My core is fixing to be pierced <laughs> over here. You remember that guy that had the... Was it Ted Mack or Ed Sullivan that had the poles with the plates on top of it? And oh, you spin Ed them Sullivan, around? yeah. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I feel like a plate <laughs> over here spinning around on this wobbly stool. Right. Now, we uh, we need to let everybody know, but we're kind of in that uh, limbo situation that we have been here at 93.1 for a couple of days. There are some uh, technical difficulties, shall we say, at the transmitter for 93.1. You are still able to pick up the 93.1 signal from the stream, whether it be Alexa or TuneIn Radio or our website, uh, uh, News Talk West Tennessee. Uh, you can get the stream there from direct from 93.1. However, in order to cover the airspace, we are also simulcasting on our sister station 101.5. So if you're a radio listener, 101.5 is where you need to be for the next couple of hours. Or actually, for the entire day, if you want to know the truth. And uh, if you're a, a, a streamer, then just go where you normally go. Are you lost? So if you're <laughs> on 101.5, you got lucky and you got us this morning. But right. if you're on 93.1, they ain't heard a word that you just said. Yeah, unless they're listening on the stream, yes. On the stream. Yes. I don't know why I always think of water when that I word know, is used. I do, too. I, know. I think of Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton, Islands in the Stream. Yeah. Yeah. I think of trout fishing myself. <laughs> you know, I have never trout fished. I have once. I have catfished. I have bottom fished. I have I have rod and reeled, but most fun I ever having my clothes on. Really? Yeah. Hmm. It was fun. It's like a lot of work, man. Yeah. Well, I I went to I did that one time, and I had a guy that actually rowed the boat for me. Yeah. And I sat in the front of the boat, and my son Josh sat in the back of the boat, and all we did was cast into the sudsy stuff yeah that's where they always said go to that little sudsy line in the that's where in they the hang out huh yeah that, that's where the food is supposedly huh. it, it's a it's a it's a buffet in, yeah. right in that little sudsy part they call it yeah guy was rowing the boat was his name michael by any chance no oh i thought maybe when y'all got through that day you said hey michael row the boat ashore yeah he said hallelujah, <laughs> that's right. hallelujah. oh that was bad <laughs> Oh, well, we've got to get started So Well, we we got to Hey, I'll get you started right now. All I right. don't know since our now I, I may just be talking into the mic, nobody listening on this, because we were talking Thursday, Thursday. Yeah. about a dilemma I had where I got stumped. Uh-huh. It had to do with a faucet that had a problem. Right. The, 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 the problem was... You turned on the faucet. This is one of these single lever faucets where you don't have to have two hands to do anything. And and you, you get the temperature just the way you want it by turning it. You know, one way's hot, one way's cold, and in yep. the middle is kind of where you want it. Yep. And I couldn't get any hot water. No hot water at all. At all. Tried everything. Took it apart. Looked at it. Blew through it. Read. Yeah, actually <laughs> read the instructions. Oh, Lord. You were desperate. Person did not have hot water. I went to the folks at the pro desk of the plumbing outfit. They said, got here what you want. This is what you got to have. I took it out there. Didn't work. Called some colleague friends of mine from other companies and asked them the question. They, well, here's what you got to do. It didn't work. Then I called one of the old timers and talked to him. He says, well, you got to do this, and if you get it upside down, you'll never get it to work. And I went through all of his analogies, and it didn't work. Well, as I've said, the, po the folks in the white coats have just made faucets too complicated. I, I, back in the day when... You had a drippy faucet or you had a problem, you just unscrewed the stem and you took the the uh, washer off the back end of it. And mm -hmm. If you didn't have a washer, you simply just flipped it over to use the good side for a while. 
while you went and tried to find a washer and uh, put it back together and problem solved. Well, no, this, this had something look like NASA invented. It was <laughs> entirely... Well, let's see. I think the analogy I used when I pulled it out, it looked like the robot yeah, lost, lost in, lost space, in space without the arms. <laughs> I mean, it had the legs and the yeah. fat body narrowed at the top. And where the head should sit was the stem where the yep. handle went. It was a weird. But anyway. As, as an old friend of mine would have said back in the day, it didn't favor nothing. That's right. <laughs> it didn't. So, so here we go. Now, I'm on a mission. I'm going to figure this out. It just, I can't, I can't be stumped like this. So I Googled it even. Oh, four guys on Google knew exactly what my problem was. Mm -hmm. They were all four wrong. <laughs> so I went to the to the the well let's see what do you call this thing the schematics of it I pulled yes. it up on the computer right and I said uh-huh I recognize that I recognize that well I took that out but I blew through it so if I could blow through it the water all be all would be coming through it and and um that was the only thing on that faucet that wasn't changed out and that is exactly what the problem was. Really? There was something in the back of this faucet. It was a square box that went in a round hole, believe it or not. <laughs> it did. <laughs> and it was called a, a balancing device. You need one of those for your stool. Yeah, boy, do I. <laughs> and and uh, nobody had one. I checked everywhere. Nobody had one. So I uh, called the manufacturer, and I said, I need one of these. And they said, well, we don't get calls from any of them. I said, well, guess what? You do now. Yep. And they shipped me one in. I got it, and I went out there yesterday afternoon late and put it in. And the homeowner's standing right there beside me because yep. we're both stumped. But he's, he, he hired me because he thought I knew something, and I didn't. <laughs> the veil has been lifted. So. I put it in, I turned the water on, uh -huh. and I flipped it on wide open hot. I said, okay, you go first. <laughs> I had him come over here, and I, he stuck his hand in the shower, and he says, well, if that don't beat all, it's hot. All right. I said, here we go. We're cooking now. So You need to get Josh, your son, to post that fix on the interstate, interstate, on the internet. I'll post it on the interstate, too. But That's all right. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you, you'd you be the wizard of the world, man, because there's probably a hundred other people out there having the same problem you had. Well, I would think, but then, you know, I'll tell you how things come in threes. Uh -huh. Day before yesterday, I got two calls, different brands of faucets with the same problem. I didn't have time to get to those. Yeah. But I got the parts. So, Monday, I'm going to go solve the world's problems again on two other locations. Uh, is it, is, you think they have these little balancing things in them, too? Well, they, they it, it, apparently so. It, it, it all goes back to these faucets that have these skull guards on them. Yeah. And apparently there's just something magical about the inside of those that run the, the, the cost of the repair. Yeah, well, the, the part yeah. costs more than what the faucet did. Really? I'm serious. Oh, jeez. It, you know, it, it's kind of like one of them car things where if you you get all the parts to the car, it costs three times what the car really <laughs> exactly. originally cost. Well, yeah. that's kind of what we are. But anyway. Exactly. Got it fixed. Good deal. Now, the bad thing about all of this is I yeah. told this guy that I was going to be talking about him on the radio this morning. Okay. So he said, well, what do you mean? And I told him about our little gig, you know, we right, got here. Right. And I told him where to tune, and I told him how to do it. <laughs> and now he's going to be asking me to fix my radio station because he's tuned on 93.1, and I'm not there. Would you mind running over to Bells when you leave here? <laughs> <laughs> Just to take a look. It may be the balancing valve. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad you got it fixed. Cause I, I could tell Thursday that was that was weighing heavily on you. I was befuddled. Befuddled. In, uh -huh. in, a, in a major way. Well, you know, I, we, we talk about these guys all the time in, in a joking sort of way. And before I get into that, 
uh, I did not do the phone number. 731-410-7560 is the Victory Honda text line. That is working, as is the uh, call-in phone line. You can talk directly to John at 731-891-6161. So give us a call if you've got problems this morning. We are on uh, the website of y'all.com this morning, live. John Rawl is here pushing buttons and twirling cameras around. So if you'd like to uh, tune in that way, you can do that too. A lot of ways to find us, but uh, it's uh, unfortunately. We don't know where we are. We're not, we're not <laughs> sure either. I can smell things cooking, so I think we're at the old country store. Yeah, yeah. we are. It's kind of distracting, but, yeah. but you know, it, it's it's in a good way. In a good way. Oh, yeah. 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 Just yeah. something about country ham just really. Oh. Uh, yeah, bacon fries. There's and, not another another cooking smell quite like it. Well, no, and and you don't get that in radio stations very often. No, you don't. No, no unless no, somebody no. left over their <laughs> Le- left stuff, the, left the switch open. <laughs> yeah, it's one yeah. of them things. Do you uh, are you a, are you a veggie eater? I know I don't have anything to do with valves or anything, but I, that was a good segue. Well, we were talking about the smells of cooking and everything. Yeah, there, there's just a couple of things that I cannot bear to be around when they're cooking. I bet they are. I bet I know what they are. And they are? Chitlins and turnip greens. Well, no, turnip greens don't bother me. Chitlins, okay. yeah, probably would. Right. Yeah. No, but it, on uh, on a veggie side of it, broccoli. Yeah, that is kind of nasty. I tell my wife, I go in there, I said, man, I can't believe y'all eat that after standing here smelling it like that. She said, well, it, it don't smell that bad. I said, it does, too. It smells like feet. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just does. So, I, so, obviously, I'm not. Sounds like you got a bigger problem than the broccoli, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what am I doing smelling feet, right? Uh, what, it, what was the old thing about you built upside down? You, you, uh, your, your nose runs and your feet smell? Is that, uh, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but we digress. Now, we're talking about the, the white coats. The, yeah, the, the yeah. engineered that thing that took you three days to get a part for to get yeah. it fixed, okay? Yeah. I just, you, I've got a little project in my house that you're you're about to get into, and it's it's a simple one. It's replacing a an under counter light over my sink. Okay. Okay. Straightforward, no big deal. Two wires, hook it up, go home, right? Yep. Except if I tried to do it, it would be two wires, go to the emergency room, then go home. And the floor would be wet. And the floor would be wet. Because <laughs> <laughs> water would be coming out of it. And it would have anything to do with the sink. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway. I'm looking at this new light fixture that I bought. Whatever happened to you You flip the little switch on the wall and light comes out, and that's all there is. Yeah. No, 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 no. We got uh, Kelvin. Is He'll be there with you. He, Kelvin will be there with you helping out. I mean, this thing's got, it's got, you can dim it. You can change the hue. You can change the, uh, the, the warmth of the, of the glow. Why? Why do we need that? I don't know. And all this for only thirty nine ninety five. And 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 the only thing it it helps is keeping the white coats employed. That's yep. the trouble. We got somebody's, too many things messing up a good thing. Somebody's brother in law. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There yep. you go. Well, you're right though. But I did I did find out and I, and, and while you're talking about lights, yes, I did find a good reason not to have an incandescent bulb day before yesterday. Okay. Um, I had to had to go out on an electrical call. Uh, people's light didn't work, and uh, I went up there and uh, took a look at it and uh, flipped the switch on, and I saw a little arcing going on mm-hmm. up in the fixture that really wasn't normal. We're right. supposed to see that up in the yeah. in the ceiling. So I went to take it apart, and it kind of went. <laughs> Ooh. And kind of messed it up on it. Statue, didn't it? Yeah, so uh, opened it up, and it was one of those little simple ceiling fixtures that you uh, that fit up against the ceiling. Got two little light bulbs inside of it. Mm-hmm. Well, these two little light bulbs were a hundred watts a piece, and when I took the first screw out of the fixture, everything come down. The wires, the light fixture. It had cooked everything up in that box, and the sparks were flying. So, I wonder it didn't catch something on fire. Well, exactly. It almost did. it got the plastic box so hot in the ceiling over the time 
that I just touched it and it would break. It was had just cooked it. Oh man! So anyway, we got all that fixed, and one of the light bulbs had burned out, and they handed me an LED bulb. And I said, "Well, tell you what, have you got another one?" They looked at me funny. I said, "Well, that one's fine. Just use it." I said, "Well, no. Here's your problem." Your problem is whoever put this light fixture up originally, when you buy these light fixtures, it's got that little insulation, piece of insulation on the back of the uh, the fixture, mm-hmm. and they didn't put it in there. It was gone. Oh. So you had an oversized incandescent light bulb in that fixture that generated so much heat, it cooked all the wires burn the cover on the fixture, burn the box in the ceiling, and all of the insulation on the wires up in the junction just kind of fell off. So the lady looked at me, and she says, well, what does that have to do with it? (laughs) I said, heat. Yeah. And I said, the LED ones now, I can put this right back up, give you more light than what you had, and no heat. Yeah. And she looked at me with one of those do what expressions. Uh huh. I've seen. And those. I said, "What's this?" And I screwed the bulb in, and I just kept my hand on it. And it, she said, "You gonna get burned?" I said, "No, I'm not." And cause it, they don't put off heat. True. So uh, we we uh, I explained the situation to her, which went into another conversation. <laughs> Which is what brought me up there originally. There, there were multiple problems yeah. at this house. She had no power in the garage. The receptacles wasn't working and her deep freeze was off. And she'd lost her vegetables and meat from the summer before. She was tripping breakers up in the uh, on the kitchen circuits. And then her light wasn't working. We just started on the light. Right. So then we went to the problem with the tripping breakers uh, at the kitchen, on the kitchen counter. And I said, let me guess, you got one of those for Christmas, didn't you? <laughs> she showed me one of those uh, big, well, some kind of a fryer that was a pressure cooker fryer. Yeah. I, I forget the name of it. Yeah, right I know now. what you're That's about. Yeah. Had that plugged in. She also had a brand new food processor plugged in. In the same hole. And she had a coffee pot in the receptacle right beside, plugged in and working because they drank coffee all day long. Well, she was talking about, oh, I got me a short in here. It keeps throwing the breaker. and got it, that Nobody ever has a short. It's always yeah. a dead short. Dead short. Dead yeah. short. Yeah. And I said, well, you don't have a problem here. And I said, the problem is you got too much stuff plugged in. And that just didn't ring with her. Yeah. So about that time, the husband come in, explained the situation to him. And it's kind of funny. He looked over at it and said, I told you we were plugging too much stuff into that. You don't ever listen to me. And uh, Yeah, you don't ever listen to me. That was the next thing that come out of his mouth. So I had to tell the lady that she couldn't use her Christmas present. Yeah. And she says, well, I want to use that. What do we do? I said, well, we've got to run another circuit in here and put something on a dedicated line. Oh, and on top of that, she had a microwave. All, that and, and all of it was on the same circuit. Oh, boy. So we, we, we got that explained because there really wasn't anything wrong. And then we went to the problem with the outlets out in the uh, garage. And this is where the husband got embarrassed because I just went over there and I pushed the reset on the GFCI, everything came on. And he looked at me and he said, don't tell my wife you did that. <laughs> She'd be over there poking on it all the yeah. time. <laughs> and uh, so I explained to him how to reset the yeah. GFCI. And so we left there and everybody was happy. And I'm going to go back Monday and put them in a, a doorbell because uh, you could only ring the back door and you <laughs> couldn't ring the front door and that's where the company came because it yeah. wouldn't go to the back door i told them <laughs> i could change it and put the ding dong on the ding and the ding on the ding dong and the right. ding dong wouldn't work that's and everybody's right. fine <laughs> kind of blew their mind on that that's one a, you, you've, war, you've war, ruined these people 
But yeah. hey, but it makes you look even smarter. <laughs> Speaking of ding and ding dongs, yeah. true story. Yeah. I had to go to a local commercial establishment out here on Van Drive, and it Bless said you. on my work order, "Yeah, ding don't ding loud enough." That's exactly what it said from a from a corporate office <laughs> in Scranton, <laughs> uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, hey, that explains it all. That right said, there. would you? They don't count up there, you know. No, that. It's, I know it's probably it's probably an illegal illegal request. <laughs> it's probably. <laughs> Said the ding don't ding dong loud enough. They yeah. actually put that on a work order. Gee whiz. But anyway. All they had to say was the doohickey's not loud enough. Or the whatchamacallit. I can't hear my whatchamacallit. You'd have known exactly what to do. Exactly, but they can't understand plain English yeah. like that. I mean, that's, you know, it sounded like maybe their hostess cupcakes weren't loud enough. Or that's right. I don't know. <laughs> Ah, oh, there's always things to be seen. Always oh, I know things it. to be seen. Hey, it's awful quiet here this morning. Give out that phone number and text number again. Text line is 731-410-7560, the Victory Honda text line. Call in number 731-891-6161. It is John Allen's Tricks of the Trade, and it's at 93.1 if you're streaming or 101.5 for those of you listening on terrestrial radio. And the thing of it is, I left 101.5 a uh-huh. long time ago. In order to get back here. Uh, to get back <laughs> here. And now I'm even told to complicate things even more. Yeah. We're going to be moving this show to the 101.5 building. Which is going to be 93.1. Which is going to be 93.1. <laughs> but, and it's going to be 93.1, but not on 101.5. Correct. <laughs> it, I don't know where I am, but I'm there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. No matter where you are, here you come. You know. Here you come. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to try to figure out all these numbers, and we don't know whether to add them, multiply them, or divide them at this point, but we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with John Allen's Tricks of the Trade. You stay with us. Hi, friend. I'm Paul Heil, inviting you to join me right here for a very special presentation, Gospel 2020 in Review. We'll count down the past year's 20 most popular Southern Gospel songs with exclusive comments from the artists who made every one of those songs so meaningful during a very difficult year. Join us for Gospel 2020 in Review. The Gospel Greats heard every Sunday morning from 6 to 8 a.m. on Newstalk 101.5 and from 1230 to 230 on 93.1 FM. We've been fighting the war on drugs for a long time. We answer the phone 24-7, 365 days a year. On a busy night, we answer hundreds of calls. This war on drugs needs our intervention. Since 2014, Addiction Hope and Helpline has helped people struggling with drugs and alcohol. When the phone rings, we help people when they need it the most. When we get a caller into treatment, it feels good. It's a blessing. If you're struggling, drinking, using, and need to get clean, don't suffer alone in silence. Call Addiction Hope and Helpline. Our people understand, and many are also in recovery. Call for support and strength. You can call for someone who can't or isn't willing. It's an act of love. Together we can help you beat this thing and erase addiction from your vocabulary once and for all. Call 800-520-5228. 800 520 5228. 800 520 5228. Hey, Dan. Hang on. Dan. Uh, hang on. Danny. Whoa. What? Let's sell this house and buy another. Say what? Seriously. This was your house when we got married. We need to find our house. Emily, mi casa es tu casa. Your bachelor pad is my bachelor pad? Okay, babe, look, if we're going to do this, we have to call the Greer Real Estate Group. Oh, I like them. They really care about their clients, and they know what they're doing. Well, Brad's hobby is construction and repair. He can help us with what we need to get our house ready for the market. And I like Jennifer. She's kind, helpful, and handles all the paperwork. And Jonathan Greer, he's like a son to me. Speaking of children... Now, wait a minute. We've got Freddie and Susie. The cat, Stan. Dan, we have to have a pool. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Talking to John Rawl and John Allen. This is John Allen's Tricks of the Trades on 93.1 and 101.5 this weekend. Uh, it is a Saturday morning, and uh, we had somebody that, uh, that dug deep enough, and they found us on the wow, text bless line. Her the heart. Victory Honda text line. It says, morning, true confessions. 
Were any of the ladies in years of service call, so to speak, lonely, single, wanton, and needing of another call? Just about any time will do, Mr. John. Great show. Fess up now. <laughs> Have they ever called you to fix something that didn't require a screwdriver or a hammer? I think if you've ever been offered favors is what the, the texter is asking. I run like a scalded dog. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know what to do if you had it, would you? No, but there's <laughs> always Monday. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Dexter, uh, uh, I like your, I like your, uh, your, your slant this morning. It's a little bit different. Oh, but, yeah. but so are we. There we go. <laughs> hey, we have two great sponsors that make make this frivolity possible every Saturday morning. Yeah. And uh, John Raw just reminded me after after this show this morning, Jimmy Leach with the Investigator, and then we are, as John said, we are the pregame show for the NFL uh, Wild Card that we're going to be carrying the rest of the afternoon here on 101.5. So it'll be us, it'll be Jimmy Leach, and it'll be football right here on 101.5. Who's playing? Oh, I don't know. We've got six games today. Six games today. Three today and three tomorrow, right? Yeah. Three so, games? Yeah, three games today, three games tomorrow in the wild card divisions. Yeah. Mm. Titans are playing at some – what time are they on, John? Tomorrow. Okay. I think, yeah, 1 o'clock or maybe the 11 o'clock game. I'm not sure. Anyway. Who but, are they yeah. losing to this weekend? Ravens. The Ravens? <laughs> <laughs> Since you put it that way. Uh-oh. <laughs> Texter, thank you for uh, for shooting that in here. 731-410-7560, the Victory Honda text line. Excuse me, text line. The call-in line is open also at 731-891-6161. And uh, to clarify all this, this just a little bit, we are having some transmitter uh, difficulties at 93.1. That's why we have uh, different things going in different directions uh, this morning. They're working diligently to get that taken care of, and uh, we'll, we'll get it done. Mr. Man, was Kathy Bates good sports? Do what? I don't know. Mr. Man, was Kathy Bates good sports? Uh, you're going to have to do a little clarification. I'm not that smart. I, I, <laughs> I am smart enough to know, though, if I need a fence to keep my dog in and everybody else's dog out at no extra charge, West 10 Fence Company is where you go. Hey, I, I couldn't agree with you more. It's even hard to dig under one of them fences it is. on some of them because you is. can tell them about you got a problem. Say your hog wants to get out all the time yep. or your chickens get up under there, mm -hmm. they'll put that fence down in the ground That's about right. six inches to where they can't they dig can't under. They can't dig under it or they'll get tired the, of trying. They, they are, they'll keep them from rooting. That's right. <laughs> it's not anybody, not just anybody fence company that you can That's right. have a root foot. Root proof fence. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Yeah. Well, not only that, but you know when they when they fixed uh, fixed my fence, put that little section of fence up for me. Uh, I had a custom one inch hole that I had personally drilled in that fence so I could run my water hose out to the front yard. They even put the hole back. Wow. Yeah. In the same spot too. In the didn't same they? spot. Wow. Yeah. And they do fencing also. Oh, they do? <laughs> yes, they do at West End Fence Company. <laughs> they do all uh, kinds of fencing. I know you're one of your complexes downtown, your apartment complex at LaRue. I, I believe they, they did all of they that, did that electronic we, fence and all yeah, that stuff. We, yeah, we had uh, a nice wrought iron fence, and then we had an, a matching chain link fence in yep. the back and uh, heavy-duty rods. They put a gate in it that opened and closes when you punch in the little buttons. Right. And uh, when things go wrong as things eventually wear out they'll come fix it and uh they they do it all and uh they're easy to get a hold of and and very competent people that come out yeah that nowadays you got to worry about who comes to your house yeah oh yeah i mean you can get some real rough looking people coming out that You'd rather, well, I don't not, you'd rather not have there by themselves. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah you don't want to. You don't want to be around them, and you don't want them there by themselves. Yep. That's right. And but they got good folks, and uh, and uh, they come out and they they come in there with equipment that is for the job. You don't. Uh, they they come equipped to get it done and get yep. it done right and get it yep. done quick and get out of there. Yeah. And they clean up their mess. Well, I'll give you an example of, of something that most wouldn't do. They would just disappear in this situation. But they were hanging a double drive through fence at, at my house. Yeah. And it wasn't it wasn't hanging to suit them. 
So I'm sitting in, in the house doing whatever I was doing. I get a knock on the door like that. And I went to the door, and it was them. And they said, look, we gotta, we're going to have to go back to the shop for a couple of minutes to get this thing to hang right. We've got to do a little maneuvering we can't do on site. I said, okay. Now, most of them would have just thrown that thing in the truck and taken off, and you look out there, and you got no gate and nobody out there. That That's didn't right. happen. With it used to be running around the neighborhood. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And the neighborhood would be running around my backyard. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, they do a great job. Uh, and uh, all kinds of fencing, chain link, as you mentioned, ornamental iron, the warehouse fencing, temporary construction fencing. That's something that I can think back in the day when I was around construction sites, you didn't see temporary construction fencing. No, that's one of them OSHA things. All we, the only kind of fence that we had back then was some guy that stood out there and waved his arm and said, y'all get out of here. <laughs> yeah. And now you gotta ha- you got to have that fencing. Yep. you yep. got to have that little orange stuff and things to keep people out because nowadays if somebody wanders in on your construction site and gets hurt and they're not supposed to be there, they'll yep. sue you. Oh, yeah. And they'll win. Absolutely. So they yeah. can do that for you, too. All you got to do is call them, 731-668-5959, and put you right in there where you need to be. It's West 10 Fence Company out on Hollywood Drive. And and they're good and they're local. So uh, yes. deal with them. Yes, keeps money flowing right here in Jackson and Madison County. And, and Laurie Nunnery and her group downtown with tourism like that. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Lori yeah. still come out here and talk to you every yeah, week? Yeah, Lori's in with me on uh, Wednesday's first hour, and we, we talk about all the good stuff. She's got another couple of projects coming up and and working on some uh, federal grants to bring more people and their money into Jackson and Madison That's County. good. She's yeah. a good one. She I knows love, how yeah, to do she, it. She's, she's a good girl. She really is. Yeah. Absolutely. Does a great job with a small staff. Actually had a government official on the day before her, and we were talking about tourism and, and the lack of because of COVID, you know, and uh, I said, if there's anything you could change for the coming year, what would it what would it be? He said, Well, you know, we're talking about tourism. He said, He said our tourism budget is way too low. He said, Corinth, Mississippi, Tupelo, Mississippi, uh, Murfreesboro, places like that. He said their budget is three times ours. And I said, Well, you better be glad you got Laurie and her crew because they make every dime count. That's right. So, yeah. So I don't. Know, maybe that'll happen. Maybe that'll happen. Maybe so. Yeah. Yeah. What else you got on your mind this morning? You know, I had a question that came in this week, and you used to you didn't have to think about this, right. but now you do. Uh, you know, it's we finally got our Christmas decorations put away, or you're supposed to have anyway, and and if you didn't, it might be a little redneck because you're just leaving them up because we're putting them up early for next year. Yeah, but. Uh, People have wallpaper in their house. And the question comes up, can you paint over wallpaper? And the answer is yes, but not the way you used to do it. Okay. Uh, back in the day, wallpaper was wallpaper, and it was paper. It was paper. Yeah. It was paper. And uh, if you knew what you were doing, I preference the, the situation that way. If you knew what you were doing, you knew how to paint that wallpaper. You knew not to get it too wet because if you did, it would release the glue behind the paper paper uh-huh. and everything would fall in the wall. Yep. Uh, in the floor. Yep. Yeah, you know, I, I never will forget hanging wallpaper about 35 years ago at a particular historical <laughs> residents in this town uh-huh. and and it came pre-pasted and uh we rolled it all out we put it all up took a break at that time came back in the room about 15 minutes later and that paper was on the floor mm-hmm. because it wasn't pre-pasted properly and it all fell down so you, you learn a lot of tricks on that over oh, the yeah. years but yep. the point is uh, that was back when paper was paper. And what you knew when you were going to paint wallpaper, you knew to make sure that the paper was stuck on the wall good first. Right. Otherwise, you're going to have an instant bubble in the wall. But you didn't put too much paint on there. You used a thin nap roller, and you would roll it on. And uh, you didn't, you just didn't saturate the wall like you might if you were rolling uh, like sheetrock. Right. Nowadays, you got another situation. Very seldom do you find wallpaper that is paper. 
it's vinyl, vinyl coated. Yep. So you got a different problem. True, you can paint over that, and you can just about get it as wet as you want to, and it looks pretty. Yep. But then you uh, get finished, and you come back and rub up against it if you, all you did was paint over it, and it come, the paint comes off the paper. Uh-oh. Because it's not bonded. So if you're going to paint over vinyl paper, you've got to go in there and put a bonding primer on it first. And in some cases, lightly sand that vinyl wallpaper to rough it up just a tad. Yeah. And then you can paint over it. So if you're getting ready to paint over wallpaper, look and see what you got. If it's paper paper, you can handle it one way. If it's vinyl, you got to handle it another. Right. But either way, the answer is you can paint over wallpaper okay now the other question that comes up should you <laughs> you just had to, ask. I had to ask if it's vinyl wallpaper no you ought to pull it off yeah now that's where you get into bigger problems because oh, yeah. if you had that wallpaper put up and it was over a painted surface mm-hmm It'll probably come off real easy. I mean, you just grab the corner of it, and you can strip a room in 10 minutes. But if uh, this house had been built, and it was raw sheetrock, and they didn't size the walls, Uh and then put the wallpaper on top of that, when you go to pull it off, it's going to come off in little bitty strips, and Mm -hmm. then you're going to pull the face off of that sheetrock. Then you're you're going to have a big problem. Oh, yeah. And your little... uh, project that you saw on uh, a home improvement show on the tv <laughs> that was gonna you were gonna knock out one saturday morning is yep. gonna turn into two weeks of work yep so just need to investigate what you got first and yep. see what what you need to do while we're talking about painting things uh i was watching one of those those shows that i shouldn't be watching those home fix-up things yeah and uh they had they were buying a uh, a beachfront cabin and the cabin was had some age on it, and it was paneled all the way through. Yeah. What about painting paneling? Is that a good idea? Now, I've, I have done that on one of my previous houses in the past, and it turned out okay. Y'all did a good job with it. Well, then again, it, you got to see what you're starting with. Now, back in the day when paneling was paneling and it was all made out of wood, You could paint it real easy, but you had to sand it first because they had a product that came out a long time ago Uh that people would dress their paneling with called liquid gold. Liquid gold, yes. And it was brand new. Yeah, brand new. It was it was the cure all for everything. It'd take care of scratches and and it'd give it a nice shiny finish. But it it also attracted dust. And I mean you could smear liquid gold all over everything. And the next thing you know, um, <laughs> you have to dust your walls, yeah. and then they get gummy. It looked like the back of a baby rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah, it did. fuzzy looking. Yeah, it 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 was one of those things. So you got to clean it, and uh, you can clean it, and then you can paint it. Mm-hmm. But then, I don't know what it was. They they as always they mess up a good thing, and paneling <laughs> wasn't paneling anymore. Yeah, paneling became particle board with a vinyl coating on the front of it Mm -hmm. well you can paint that too but you got to paint it with a bonding primer right and scuff it up a little bit and you can do that but if you don't do the surface prep and this goes for just about any kind of painting if you don't do the prep work your finished product is not going to be any good at all true so yes you can paint your paneling yep what about what about the little gaps? Do you do anything? I, I've seen some You read people, my mind. I, okay. Well, that was a short read. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, but I've seen some people just, you know, smear the paint into the gaps. And I've seen other people go in and actually use a filler to fill the gaps to make it look like a sheetrock wall. Uh, both of them are wrong. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. What do you do? Here's what happens. And this is why I tell people, if they're going to paint inside, do uh-huh. it in the winter. Right. Like now. Like right now, because, and we'll use paneling as an example. Every four feet, you got a crack. Yeah. And that crack is normally black. Oh, yeah. And uh, in the wintertime, that paneling draws up, so you're going to have a bigger crack than what you'd have 
uh, in the in summertime. The, right. So if you put a filler in that, it's going to pull loose, and you're going to see the crack next winter. If you paint it now, when it's drawn up, you can get stuff down in the crack, but don't do a filler. Get a, use a magic marker uh, to fill that up, uh, and and don't paint it at all. Just kind of, I mean, don't put any kind of filler. Just paint it. Yeah. And when it swells up, the crack will close up. But the fact that you painted it while it was drawn up, mm-hmm. when it opens back up next winter, you'll see a painted surface. Aha. Uh-huh. Now, a little trick we learned when we were putting up paneling back in the day in the 60s and 70s uh-huh. was wherever your joints come together and you were uh, paneling in the summertime yep. when things were swollen up, yep. you took a magic marker and where those two pieces of paneling come together on the stud, yeah. you put a use your magic marker and put a black line on the stud, on the stud. and then you put your your two pieces on top of it, so if it expanded and contracted, you wouldn't see anything but a black line, so you wouldn't notice it. Couldn't tell it. So that's just a little trick that this was way back before they had those do-it-yourself shows. Yes, absolutely. So we did it ourselves and knew what to do. We didn't have to be told. Well, that's ergo the name of the show, Tricks of the Trade. There you go. You know, We're going to take another commercial break, and we'll be right back. This is Tricks of the Trade with John Allen, 731-410-7560, the Victory Honda text line. Call in number 731-891-6161. We are on the air at 101.5 today, streaming at your normal streaming locations, wherever you listen for 93.1, and we're also on y'all.com. Just go to that website and you can see all the action going on here. And we'll be right back after these quick breaks. Hi, this is Shannon Nordstrom. And I'm Russ Evans. Join us weekly for the Nordstrom's Under the Hood show with the Motor Medics. Listen in as we answer questions and give free automotive advice. From general car care like brakes, shocks, and preventative maintenance to the big stuff like engine replacements and computerized systems. You should listen to the Nordstrom's Under the Hood show with the Motor Medics each week right here. Under the Hood every Saturday morning from 6 till 8. Presented by Gene Langley Ford and Humboldt, the dealership service bill. Debt reduction depends on creditors, balances, and payments, client testimonials, or dramatizations. If you owe $10,000 in credit card debt and your minimum payments siphon away your paycheck each month, you can get debt-free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit cards. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe $10,000 or more. Call Get Debt Free now to resolve your debt once and for all. My family no longer has 20 years of payments ahead of us at 20% interest. There's no fees until you see results. Make one monthly program payment and free up your cash. Call 800-683-3844. 800-683-3844. 800-683-3844. In 1901, a woman by the name of Annie Taylor climbed into a barrel so that she could ride that barrel over Niagara Falls, the first person to do so. The reason for her crazy endeavor? She was struggling to make ends meet, and she was hoping for fame and financial security. It's Ryan from United Faith Mortgage, a faith and family mortgage team that tries to improve your financial outlook without having to ship you over a 170-foot waterfall. Our mortgage team happens to be an arm of a bigger company who is a direct lender, which means our company gets to use its own money and make its own decisions within its own walls. There's no middleman. This advantage often allows us to get you a better rate, which can save you monthly and lifelong money through a refinance, or help you with a cash-out refinance, cashing out some of your home's equity to use for life. We are United Faith Mortgage. United Faith Mortgage is a DBA of United Mortgage Corp. 25 Middle Park, Road, Melbourne, New York. Licensed mortgage banker. For all licensing information, go to animalistconsumeraccess.org. Corporate animalist number 1335. Rack animalist number 65233. Equal housing lender. I license in Alaska, Hawaii, Georgia, Massachusetts, North Dakota, South Dakota, or Utah. Debt reduction depends on creditors, balances, and payments, client testimonials, or dramatizations. If you owe $10,000 in credit card debt and your minimum payments siphon away your paycheck each month, you can get debt-free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt-Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. 
shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe $10,000 or more. Call Get Debt Free now to resolve your debt once and for all. My family no longer has 20 years of payments ahead of us at 20% interest. There's no fees until you see results. Make one monthly program payment and free up your cash. Call 800-683-3844. 800-683-3844. 800-683-3844. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, News Talk, West Tennessee. It is uh, Saturday morning. John Allen's Tricks of the Trade. John, uh, you missed that if you weren't watching on, on uh, y'all.com. John got up and and uh, walked around his chair to uh, to take a little pressure off. Yeah, everything down there went dead yep. from circulation being cut <laughs> off of this crazy, nasty, ugly, insufficient chair. <laughs> In other words, no. yes. Uh, let's see. Let's catch up on a couple of texts here. It says an old friend who was head of media and PR at Black and Decker would be treated to go out to eat by Norm Abrams from time to time. Remember him? This yeah, old house, yeah. okay, as a part of his job. Great guy, Rick said, until that show went big time and Norm became a total jerk by then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you are you saying that? One of us has, has gotten the big head. Obviously, he's talking to me. <laughs> that ain't happening. <laughs> that ain't happening. Let's see. Here's another one. John, clarify OSB. OSB is glued together wood chips. Particle board. Yeah, ex- extruded substrate something is what it stands for. But it's basically, you know how particle board was sawdust glued together? This yeah. is wood chips glued together bigger chunks yeah okay and you wouldn't believe how much that stuff costs now it's just it's ridiculous right it right i'm waiting for prices to come down a little bit is it, there is there a a proper use for it i mean you know well, people use it for underlayment and roof decking okay and uh it it's acceptable but it's just like particle board was you don't want it to get wet right uh a lot but it, it's supposedly a cheaper version than plywood. Um, and actually, with some of the plywood I've seen lately, it's actually stronger. Uh, but but it, it's a substitute material that's supposed to be more economical, except right. right now it's not. It's all obscenely high. Okay. Let's see here. Let me, let me hit this here. Oriented strand board. Yeah. OSB is what the texture says. That I wanted clarification for ply versus OSB. And you, you covered that a little well, bit. Well, I did. I, yeah. I told that. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I, I, you know, if you're using good plywood, term good plywood. Yeah. Um, sometimes OSB is superior uh, to what we used to call CD plywood because OSB, if you look at it real close, it's got a side that's got a coating on it that repels water or, or, or CD does not. And uh, so a lot of people will use the OSB uh, instead of CD plywood. And CD plywood is about the roughest plywood you can get. And... Uh, Sometimes when you walk on it, especially if you're trying to span 24 inches instead of 16, right. your weight will break through it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Texter says, I put in y'all.com and nothing would come up, and uh, it'll be uploaded to y'all.com a little bit later on, about an hour maybe. Okay. So there's there's the explanation for that. John Rawl is here, Mr. Y'all, and uh, that's what he said. So look for it in about an hour at y'all.com. Black & Decker was a big sponsor of that show. Norm turned into a white coater. Thanks. Yeah. I'll yeah. never be a white coder. Yep, and and you know, texter signed their name, their 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 uh, text name on it. Dead short. Dead short. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you'd like that one. <laughs> I changed y'all to y'all, but only Nashville sites came up. That's what's on now. Y-A-L-L-O. Yeah, so yeah. 
Okay. Don't use yeah, the apostrophe. Yeah, don't use the apostrophe, right. Y-A-L-L dot com. Thank you, Texter. Appreciate that clarification. Tricks of the trade, 4107560 is that Victory Honda text line that we've been referring to. 731-891-6161 is the direct call in number. And uh, our other uh, title sponsor for yep. this show and the Thursday afternoon show is Economy Siding and Windows. And if you know, if you think, who do I call down there? How can I remember who I'm talking to? Stormy. Just ask for Stormy. Stormy. Yeah. If you call him by his real name, he runs. <laughs> or he'll throw things at you. Or throw things. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, give Stormy a call. Stormy, uh, well, like I said, he works for me just about every week. Yep. And this week has been no exception. He's uh, gone out and put up some gutters. Does a great job on that. Yep. Uh, trimming around windows, putting in replacement windows, vinyl siding. Um, we were running a little behind the other day, and, and he even jumped in. When I got out there in a dump truck and helped me pick up the trash. Really? Just trying to get caught up before the rain came in. There you go. There you but go. Uh, it's a great a great bunch of people. Uh, they're local, too. Uh, they do a great job at what they do. They get in, they get out, and, and just they do they do good. And I recommend yep. them highly because I use them every day. Yep. And I don't recommend nobody that I don't use. There you go. You have sent them to my house on, on occasion. They have done some vinyl siding repair for me. Mm -hmm. They have replaced uh, several windows with more energy efficient, uh, better windows than I than I had. And they, as you said, they always do a great job. When they're gone, you never know they've been there. Mm -hmm. And there's one thing they got that's kind of different from everybody else. If they put in a window for you, uh -huh. And let's just say next summer you're out in the front yard mowing your grass and you pick up a rock and throw it up and it hits the window and yep. breaks it, they'll fix it free of charge. Really? There's, there's, it's a lifetime warranty on the windows. And I don't, That's a deal. I don't know how they do that, Yeah. how their manufacturer does that, but they will replace that window. Man, that's, that's I got deal. one right now that a tree limb went through yep. and they're replacing it at no cost. So, you know, I can't uh, can't beat that at all. So give them a call at Economy, yep, and uh, they'll take care of your situation. 422-3828 or catch them online at economysiding.com. We're going to take the last break, and we'll come back and wrap this thing up for this Saturday. Sounds good. Here at Jackson Off-Road, we are a complete automotive service center that does work on area business fleets, servicing and repairing both diesel and gas engines. Our experienced technicians and advanced technology will upgrade your company's vehicle's performance, saving you significant dollars. Graham Snack Food said, Jackson Off-Road keeps our fleet of vehicles on the road in a timely manner, regardless of what repairs are required or what time of the day or night we call for service or repair. Jackson Off-Road, online and on the 45 Bypass. I don't this feel like it's an important an announcement. Lack of if energy you're between the day, 50, difficulty sleeping, reduced mental focus and memory, weight gain, including belly fats, reduced sexual desire and performance. Studies show after the age of 30, most people produce 3 to 10% less hormones each year, and I felt it. I decided to do something about it, but I didn't want 152 shots of synthetic testosterone per year. What I discovered is changing my life. All testosterone replacement is not the same. Hormone pellets contain the same chemical structure as your body's natural hormones. They're placed under the skin and released bioidentical testosterone consistently to the bloodstream and last up to six months. Same thing with estrogen for females. I feel great. I don't want youth wasted on the young. I want it wasted on me. Feeling better for you can start with a simple phone call. Dr. Shannon Bone at Advance We Have a Medical. It's 731-503-4277. It's 503-4277. Call today. 731-503-4277 be glad you did. Nothing is more important than protecting your family and property. That's why you should make a free call right now to Vivint, the number one smart home services provider in the U.S. Vivint will make your home safer and more secure with a state-of-the-art system that's so simple to use. Vivint smart home specialists provide award-winning monitoring of your system 24-7, 365 to respond to any emergency, even when you can't. And with the 4.5-star rated Vivint smart home mobile app, control your entire house from anywhere. Locks, cameras, security system, all at your 
fingertips on your mobile device. Call Vivint now and get a free quote, professional installation, and full smart home service for as little as $2 per day. Equipment purchase or service agreement required. Conditions apply. Call now. A smart home is a safer home. So protect your family and your property, home or business, with a Vivint smart home system. Call 800-462-5722. 800-462-5722. That's 800-462-5722. 800-462-5722. About five minutes left in the proceedings. This is Tricks of the Trade with John Allen on this Saturday morning. Back to the text line, the Victory Honda text line we go. John, should black should backflow preventers in the yard be covered? Can they freeze? I see many that are not covered. Yes, they will freeze. They will break. You will have problems. So they do need to have a cover put on them and uh, needs to be insulated and just to... And, and you're not insulating to keep the cold air from freezing it. You're trying to keep the warm air in. Right. You want the warmth of the water in the pipe to stay in the pipe. That's what some people have a hard time understanding. Yeah. You're not keeping the cold out. You're keeping the heat in. Keeping the warm in. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense to me. But, uh, yeah, you, got, you, you better do that or you're going to have icicles before long. All right. Thank you, Texter. We appreciate that. Uh, you said you had something else you wanted to. Oh, oh, we got another text coming in here. All right, let's see what we got. Can you recommend a good roofer? Uh, well, I always. I don't like using this show to promote myself and my services, but I feel like we got the best ones around. That's something we do. So if you want to have your roof looked at, I'll be happy to do an estimate if you just call my office and. Uh, We'll set you up. There are other people around, but I don't use them, so I don't know that I need to recommend them. Yeah. So, but it that, that's just a fact. I can't help it. I guess all the uh, since we haven't had a, a, a hailstorm or a heavy wind lately, I guess all of the uh, the new pickup trucks with the magnetic signs are pretty well out of the area by now. Well, there's still a few. Are they still uh, around? There, there's a few vultures still out there trying to <laughs> to to pick things up, and uh, so be careful with those. You know. Anybody with a new truck and a magnetic sign, you might want to uh, <laughs> ask for see their business license or their work comp yeah, if I they've agree. got that. Yeah. So you know, yeah. And if they say, "What's that?" Make sure they can speak English, yeah. you know, and yeah. that way you communicate with them. Or you might get that same guy who was just so sharp, man. I mean, he impressed me with his knowledge right off the bat when he rang my doorbell and said, "You know, I can tell from the street that you've got some roof damage from this this." Uh, this last hailstorm that <laughs> yeah. went through there from the street. He could tell that. Now, this is a good man, right? Yes, he's got 20-20 eyesight. Yeah, of course, he didn't realize that you had replaced that same roof about two weeks ago. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so they're out there, man, you know. Oh, they, they, they are. They are used, you to, know. used to be the guys, you know, they always would warn, especially the elderly folks, elderly population, you know, they come up and they say, well, I, you know, I can mulch your, your bed for you for, you know, about, about 50 bucks. I can cover your whole bed. And then – they uh, when they come to the door with the with the uh, with the bill, it's about twice that because well that didn't cover enough, so we had to add a little here and a little oh, there. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 And then what was the driveway sealers that we had? Oh there for yeah, a while? always. Yeah, they pour a little little over overcooked coffee on your driveway. It's about <laughs> what it was yeah, too. Yeah, I tell you, it was it was, it was a sealer. We're about a minute and a half away. Let's wrap this thing up today. Any any quick quick uh, fixes that people need to know? We're gonna we're gonna get cold again tonight, and then we're gonna warm up a little bit. And well, you, I'm not gonna have time to get into what I wanted to get into, but okay. I will tell you this in the way of safety. Yeah, I have been into numerous houses since Christmas that uh, when it gets real cold, uh, they they want to warm it up. Right. And people are using these little space heaters that you plug into the wall. Yep. And they have no idea what kind of damage they're causing. Uh, these little space heaters pull a lot of amperage, uh, and they'll burn up these lightweight receptacles that are in the wall. Right. Uh, most all of them pull 14, 15 amps. And on a receptacle that's rated for 14, 15 amps, but in that line of, in that circuit, you've probably got a half a dozen other electrical devices plugged in. So be careful out there because the fire truck will have to come to take care of situations like that. Yep. Walked into a house yesterday, and I walked in. The first thing I saw was the oven door wide open and the elements glowing, and they were heating their house. And then they had three heaters, one in each bedroom, plugged in, and then they wondered why they had electrical problems. Wow. Opened up the receptacle, and the components 
fell out in the floor. They were totally cooked up, burned, yep. and uh, and it's all because of human error. It's not. And these people that have these warranty claims, you know, you buy to get fix stuff like this. They right. won't cover it because it's not put in right. Oh. It's abusive. It's not the way Negligence. it was designed. Yeah. It'll be an exclusion, so the cost of repair is going to be on your back. All right. We'll take that little bit of information with you as you go into your Saturday. We'll do this again uh, next week, hopefully with a uh, a working transmitter on 93.1. But we are glad to be able to do it uh, the way we have been uh, doing it today. And very quickly, cannot seem to pick up 101.5 either here in Somerville. Uh, hope hope, Hope to hear you soon. Uh, I've listened to 93.1 for 50 plus years, so we're uh, we're uh, we're uh, in the same boat you are, Texter. We want it back up and running properly. Yeah, also. We don't know where we are right now, and uh, they are working on that. Thursday, join us here on 93.1 for uh, Honey Do's and Honey Don'ts with John, and we'll see you next week on Tricks of the Trade. NFL football coming up this afternoon on 101.5. It's the Wild Card Weekend, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> 